The Walking Dead, Season 9, Episode 2. Okay, so let's start off with the things that we really don't care about. And that would be Gabriel and Jadis slash Anne are now a couple. And it's awkward and it's weird. Uh, for a long time, i kind of been wondering why Gabriel is still alive other than to worship at the altar of Rick because his character has been useless so very long. Um, the fact that the writers have chosen to pair him with uh, Jadis tells me that they still don't know what the hell to do with him. He's still just hanging on in the background, but at least, hey, now he's getting some, right? So these two are a couple, and it's basically, a lot of it is, Gabriel telling and um, you know, don't feel too awkward that people will eventually come to trust her that should be part of the community and that Rick forgave him and he now has social standing. So this is really all about buying into Rick's vision of the new world, um, which we know not everyone is exactly down with, right? So uh, it, it begins with work is being done on um, this bridge that needs to be uh, put back together so that there can be um, movement between the uh, various communities and trade because not the communities aren't self-sustaining on their own. You know, Alexandria does guns, the hilltop does farming, Oceanside does fish, and this um, kind of sticks the saviors with labor because basically what else do they have to offer but labor? They can't grow anything where they are. Um, they do make ethanol, though, so there's that. But apparently they haven't even delivered on their ethanol, which is something of a source of uh, frustration f for Maggie. So this bridge is very symbolic of everything Rick wants to do with putting together this new world. Having everybody come together to create some kind of society, some kind of foundation to sort of rebuild everything that was lost. So a lot of Rick's hopes are you know, tied to to the creation of a bridge. And this, of course, is a problem because th though the saviors are dependent, they're not exactly all in line with Rick's vision of the future. Uh, one savior in particular played by Zach McCowan, who you may know from um, Black Sails, is a source of frustration and trouble and clearly needs to be dealt with. But Rick is so busy trying to, to get this bridge and, and to build this sort of community feeling that he's absolutely ignoring um, the, the threat to his dream that this, this man um, poses. And so, of course, you know, he gets into a confrontation and a physical fight with, with, with Daryl, you know. Daryl is not buying in to what Rick wants. He firmly believes that some people cannot be saved. He's Team Maggie, uh, where this where this is concerned, and he is deeply, deeply frustrated that despite all the time that he has spent with Rick, Rick is not listening to him. Rick is so pinned in in his vision, he can't see that that the weakness in his vision is that some people. Some people don't actually belong in this community. And it's kind of stunning given that he's a cop, right? What does a cop do? A cop locks up undesirables. So given that his main job was to lock up undesirables, how could he not see the undesirables right there within his own community? Not everyone can be redeemed. And that's something that a cop should know better than anyone as far as I'm concerned. But this is Rick Achilles' heel and he is clearly, clearly um, blind to it. And it comes with a cost. You know, this week uh, they have to do some explosion. So as we know, noise brings zombies. And they planned it to have a series of explosions to, to draw the zombies away from the work site. And who do they give this important job to? Why Zach McGowan's character? Why in the world would anyone give an important job to someone this belligerent who is clearly not a team player? Like that is just setting yourself up for failure. And of course, he doesn't do it. He claims that he didn't get the radio signal and that it was no big deal. But as we know, it turns out to be a very big deal because in the process, um, a big piece of lumber falls on Aaron, crushing his arm, forcing Enid to amputate it. Yes, you heard me right. Enid amputated Aaron's arm. Why is this huge? 
because Enid is coming into her own. Enid is taking medical training. Enid is being valuable to the community in a completely different way than we have ever seen before, and this represents growth for her character. Taking it back to Aaron for a moment. Now, you would think after losing his arm that Aaron would be a little bit bitter, but he's not. Aaron has lost everything. Aaron has lost his partner. Aaron has now lost his arm. But despite all of his losses, despite all of Aaron's losses, he is still deeply committed to Rick's utopian vision of the future. This is how deeply people buy into the mythos of, of Rick Grimes. At this point, it doesn't matter what it takes for Aaron. He feels that this can happen. He wants to see this vision happen. And no matter what it costs him, it's worth it to him. Now, that's a huge, huge buy-in. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, one that Daryl isn't willing to take on and one that Maggie also isn't willing to take on. Back at the hilltop, they're still uh, dealing with the end result of Gregory's death. Because as we know, Maggie was elected leader and Maggie made the decision that Gregory needed to die without consultation from anyone. That's what dictators do. Now, Michonne shows up at the hilltop hoping to get some food supplies. Uh, and she's quick to realize that you know, they're in some very scary times because what separates Maggie from someone by, uh, like Negan? You know, Negan would just iron somebody's face. And yes, Gregory was an awful human being, an awful, awful human being. But did Maggie decide, have the right to decide that Gregory needed to die, especially once he was clear he was no longer an immediate threat? You know, uh, so this takes some negotiation. You have Michonne talking to Jesus and Jesus talking to Maggie. You know, Jesus is firmly team Maggie. And even though he doesn't necessarily agree with all of her decisions, he agrees with her sentiments. He agrees with her heart. So he's going to back Maggie. Now, Maggie does eventually end up talking to Earl, who was uh, the other man who tried to have her killed. Um, and she becomes more sympathetic when she learns about his alcoholism. Now, that would normally be a strange thing to make somebody empathetic. But why this speaks to Maggie is that Herschel, Herschel was an alcoholic. And Maggie is well aware that if Herschel was not given a, another chance, you know, she wouldn't be there today. And so would, you know, many other people would not have made it. So she's willing to give Earl a second chance under supervision. Even though she knows that alcohol can't make you do things outside of your character, um, the relationship between her father is a bit uh, is close enough for her to develop some empathy towards Earl. And it's also enough for her to decide that, yeah, maybe we do need some kind of rule. She's still saying that she's going to have the final decision on what is good for the hilltop, but she's finally agreeing with Michonne that some sort of structure might be a good thing. So where does that leave us? Well, we know that Maggie is going to be leaving the show. There were some con contract disputes. Um, and they were talking about Georgie this week, who, as you know, gave them the plans for everything that they're doing now. And in return, ended up with an awesome record collection. It seems that Georgie has been recruiting Maggie, and it would be my bet that that is Maggie's exit out of the show. As far as Rick is concerned, Rick goes to have a little talk with Negan about everything that was going on and how hard his day was. And if you're familiar with the comics, you know that Rick and Negan had these talks, and Carl and Negan had these talks, so this is not something that's new. And Negan is, is, is in the firm belief that Rick is just setting the stage for him, you know, and it would be hard to argue that, that Negan is wrong. Because as we know, it doesn't matter what you set up in this world. It's going to fall apart. It's going to collapse. The end is, 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 is always on the horizon. So Nick may ha Rick may have all these grand visions about what this universe is going to look like. But chances are it's not really going to happen. And what tells us this? The fact that saviors are going missing. 
Nobody knows where these people are. There's another bad guy out there. They just haven't met him yet.